Does anyone have any changes to the agenda for today? Additions? OK, I'll take that as a no then. And um, did everybody get a chance to look at the minutes from last month's meeting? Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So can I get a move to approve? So those? Can I get a move to approve those? I'll move to approve those. Excellent. And can I get a second? A second. Fantastic. Hello. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed, please say no. The minutes are approved. Congratulations. And, and Jane just joined in too. Hello. And, and Fritz as well. Sorry to Fritz and Jane. Um, sounds like there was a problem with the link not being as easy to find this time. So I, I apologize. Okay. It's okay. Well, the gang is all here, Adrian. So we can go right into library updates. Okay, thank you. I'm going to share my screen just in a moment here. I'm hearing myself twice. Do I, do I sound okay? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. A little bit of feedback. Okay. Um, one second while I get this right here. Um, so for library updates, I have the intergovernmental agreements with WCCLS, current services, upcoming events, some updates about library operations and how our county just moved to high risk from extreme risk, reopening plans, those all kind of go together. And I wanted to talk briefly about the OLA or Oregon Library Association conference. But right now I wanted to share my screen about the intergovernmental agreements. Um, so. I think I mentioned last time that the city council was going to be voting on this at the council meeting. Let me just get this up on the screen, um, which was last night. So they did vote on that. Let's see. Do you see a bunch of text? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is if you, if you ever want to dig deep and you want to know, you know, how does government work? This is in the city council packet for last night's meeting. This is what's called the um, the resolution, and then there's a staff report as well, and then the actual documents are in there as well. Um, but I just wanted to share a few facts about this process as a reminder in case there are any questions that come up. So right now, um, you've heard me talk a lot about levies. Usually the levies are five-year levies. We are in the last year of the last levy. Those of you that were here to vote, I think maybe all of you, well, except Lily, one day you will be a voter. <laughs> but the rest of you probably remember about um, almost a year ago, you voted um you had a chance to vote yes or no for the library levy for a five-year operation levy for WCCLS. And that supplements the funding that comes through the general fund. Here comes Stephen. Um, supplements the money that comes through the general fund from Washington County. For us, it ends up being about 20, uh, or excuse me, it went up to almost 30% of our funding. And so, oh, and Vish went back to the lobby. Hold on. There we go. Steven and Vish, you're both in. Vish keeps dropping out. So Vish, hopefully I can see your little ping every time if it comes in. But if you yeah. need to, um, Sorry. yeah, if, worst yeah. case scenario, if you can't get back in, if your connectivity goes, you know, the it's always being recorded and we can get you that link. Just some internet issues today. Sorry. Oh, oh, it's, it's how it goes. Thanks. Um, so the the levy is for the public to weigh in on, um, in this case, it was a renewal at the rate of 22 cents per thousand dollars of the assessed property tax value. And that was to keep library services at basically the current rate or current level of services at all 13 member libraries. And then the intergovernmental agreement is more the behind the scenes for the logistics of how do we get all those cities and the county and some nonprofits um, 
um, to all work together behind the scenes to make that happen. And the IGAs are linked to the levy timeline, but the voters are not voting for the IGAs. They're, that's separate. And so the IGAs would have expired. That um, There's an intergovernmental agreement, IGA, for the public library services agreement, which is kind of the main nuts and bolts of library services. And then there's one for information network agreement, and that affects us in Sherwood a little differently because we have Sherwood broadband and most of the other member libraries don't. They have um, their Wi-Fi in their facility through WCCLS. Um, but those are the two IGAs. And part of the first one, the PLSA, does also outline the funding distribution to member libraries. And so I'm seeing Jane hold up your agenda. Is it, am I going over time? Or you're muted. I'm just shuffling papers, making oh, sure I, I have everything in front of me. Like Adrian, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I see this agenda right up on the screen. Okay, sorry. No, um, sorry for that misunderstanding. No, it's no, really fine. So, so the funding distribution is basically a formula that's got a lot of different parts to it. And over the history of 44 year history, almost of uh, WCCLS, that funding distribution model has changed over the years. Um, in, um, let's see, I'm gonna hold that thought for a moment. The, the IGA that we're in right now has a lot of amendments to it and it's grown organically as member libraries have come on board. And so it needs some cleanup just for that to get all into one big document and be easier to understand and have a lot of role clarity of who does what. Does the city, does the nonprofit, does WCSOS, who does what, especially around um, technology and some of the common services that we all share. So, so there'll be a better IGA, but as you may recall, back in uh, March, when we would have had to start rewriting some of those sections of the IGA, we had just gone into the coronavirus, and so that wasn't a good time to really anticipate, well, what are library services gonna be like? What's our budget gonna be like? How, how might this impact things? And for the next few months, it was obvious I was gonna continue for a really long time. So therefore, the request was put through the channels um, to delay rewriting the IGA for a year, add on a year, which is the process the council just voted on last night, and then, um, and then revisit this. So they're actually starting that ramp up process right now to form groups that are, will include WC South's executive board, which for us, our representative on that is our city manager, Joe Call, and, uh, and policy group members, which includes me for our library and um, from all the member libraries in WCSLAS and some county administrators and finance people as well. So all those people are gonna be in kind of a think tank over the next, I think six months or so, chunking out pieces of this and working on it. And Joe will have a lot of input into that. Um, and then that will be for four years and then they'll be synced up again. So the levy and the IGAs will end at the same time. And usually the IGAs don't get updated when there's next uh, uh, levy other than just to add dates, you know, correct the dates and so on. So I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't assume this process is going to happen every single time, but it could, maybe there'll be more things to update. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I think there was a little bit of misunderstanding at the council meeting last night. And in case anybody is fact checking and I'm going to be working with city of Sherwood, of course, and, um, and WC tell us about next steps for Sherwood because Sherwood elected officials wanted more information and more input into the process. Um, it's kind of my nutshell about that. If anybody wanted to find this, I guess I could stop sharing that. You can find that under the city council packet. I can send that link through the in the minutes too. Renee, do you have any questions specifically since you or Councillor Browse, <laughs> um, since we were there last night. No, I I felt that Kristen did a, did a great job of including or sharing a little bit of information about what we were voting on. Um, it, 
something that was said just triggered some angst from a couple of council members and a lot more conversation ended up taking place than what I really felt needed to take place personally. Uh, but both Kristen and Joe did a good job of trying to waylay some of the, the consternation that followed. But no, I, you all have done a great job of explaining what was going on. So sorry that it caused <laughs> it <was> the <laughs> Thank you. I do. I should have said Kristen Schweitzer, my boss, community services director. She she did a great job. I agree. And I, I think uh, there were just a few things that like if I had been there, I might have been able to chime in. I might not have been able to chime in because that's just how meetings go sometimes. But yeah. um, like one thing that was talked about about the money, um, if we do redistribute some of that money, um, to member library in, in the funding distribution model that's going to be looked at and uh, hopefully improved all the member libraries are guaranteed to keep at least the amount that we're at this fiscal year normally there's a, a three percent increase built in um but then also normally wc sales purchases all the ebooks and that's getting more expensive and normally um you know, library services are predictable, and right now they're they're not. As there's so many things we don't know yet about what that funding distribution is going to look like, but we are guaranteed to not lose money from what we have. And I think there was a concern that that could happen too. Um, and with it being a levy renewal, not an increase, there's not more money really coming in to um, to request. Yeah, that was the major angst, if you will is the concern that if, if they're looking at the funding mechanism, then money coming to Sherwood would be lost. And the the comment that was being made is that type of thing should be looked at before a levy versus after the levy is passed. But it, it it's something that needed to be done. Uh, we didn't need to belabor the the point at that point in time in my, in my humble opinion, but uh, that's that was the the overall conversation. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I I won't belabor this point either. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> so so that happened. The the various member library um, governmental bodies are going about the same kind of thing. Many of them have already had their councils or whatever their group is approved that that uh, the new IGAs get signed and then the funding distribution works and, and everything just goes like clockwork. So um, I'll have updates as that group, what I was calling the think tank, um, um, they have a new acronym and I forget what it is, but the, as that group starts to actually form and I know more about who's on it and what they're considering and, and things like that, then I'll have more information to share as well. Um, and then, Unless there are any other questions about IGAs, I'll just keep on going on the next topic. Any other? Okay, so I'm checking my time here too. Okay, so for current services, um, we're doing a lot behind the scenes right now to plan for some changes, but from the outside, nothing's changed yet. So we're still doing our curbside model and the book bundles and online programs, that kind of thing. We we moved from the extreme risk to high risk, which we're you know pleased about, of course, as everybody is. Uh, but we have, um, our, so that means our next order of business is to get those computer appointments up and running. We have technology that we're putting in place to make that happen. And so we're gonna have Chromebooks that we have and we're getting those all set up with the right settings and everything so we'll have computer appointments we're aiming for early march possibly the first week of march or second week of march um, for chromebook appointments that would continue through march those appointments would be probably just two people at a time in the community room we're also going to have chromebooks for circulation and hotspots for circulation and those are on site now and and getting prepped for circulation and then we have um, our desktop computers that you probably walked by, you know, or maybe even used, and those are scheduled to be replaced. We're hoping that those are replaced in time for us to have appointments in the library, hopefully in April. Um, and then we want all of that to go well. And the, I should say with the Chromebooks, it's going to be a very soft rollout. We're going to 
um, reach out to our referrals that we're getting through the senior center and people who we've been working with already who have needed technology access and just because we'll be able to serve so few people at the beginning and ask for their feedback how's this process working and then slowly add from there and advertise to the general public um, and then after computer appointments are going for a little while we're getting that flow going and still maintaining curbside then we'll start with the um, access for just general public coming into the doors it would probably be a limited square footage coming to use the um, hold pickup area the new book area and the uh, self checkouts and then we'll slowly add after that so i don't have dates on that part but you know and hopefully all the trends keep going in the positive direction for safety um any questions about our operations or what the high risk and reopening plans are I'm hearing a lot of feedback on my end can you hear me okay still no okay okay um i want to talk about the Oregon Library Association Conference. So normally you hear me talk about this because I'm like, hey, I'm going to the conference or a bunch of us on staff are going to the conference and we're really excited. And uh, of course, nobody's going anywhere, you know, to a, an actual place, but the OLA conference is still being held. It's um, April 20th through 23rd and it's all virtual. Um, and the funding model is really different this year. Uh, it's such that we can pay a, a group rate for our whole organization and we all get access through the end of August. And it occurred to me in doing that for the very first time ever, we could actually afford for board members to participate optionally if you wanted to in any library sessions at a statewide conference. So I wanted to show you a little bit about that so that you knew. And I, I've heard from other libraries that they send board members and they just love it and they get really you know, energized by it. Um, never been able to afford that. I am putting that link in the, the chat, but I can send that out as well. Um, so I, let's see, one second, let me share my screen here again. So I wanted to show you a little bit about what that website looks like. And if you're interested, you could let me know. Um, do you see, so this is the Oregon Library Association homepage, or actually I searched, it's the same link I just sent you. So olaweb.org backslash conferences. Um, right at the top is the 2021 OLA conference. If you go to um, conference website, here is probably the best place to start. And so the theme is equity, diversity, and inclusion. And um, oh, sorry, I thought that was the best place to start, but I realized, wait a second, let me go back here. Da, da, da. Am I looking right at it? I just had it. Sorry, now you see me in real time fumble. I thought that the link was just right there. Where did it go? Website is available here. Registration conference. I think maybe if I just click on register. There we go, full program descriptions. Okay, <laughs> like, let me show you how to find it. <laughs> if you click on register, sorry about that. And then uh, full program descriptions. And so once you click on that, here we go. And this works pretty well on a mobile device too. So you can search or you can go by date and time. But um, there's some keynote speakers, there's different sessions. Um, you know, the OLA conference is for public libraries, school libraries, academic libraries, everything. And so I usually, personally, professionally, I usually kind of go for the ones that are either for everybody or for public but as a board member like i'd be happy i'd be pleased as punch if anybody just wanted to do anything library related just kind of add to your repertoire of what you know um like universal design for libraries could be handy for our discussions about expanding the facility someday you know things like that so i'm going to send this proper link 
Has anybody ever attended a library conference before? Anybody interested a little bit? I'm interested. Oh, yeah. I've done a church library conference. I've been to a few oh, of those, yeah. but not a few. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, I yeah, saw a few nods there. I've been to library conferences and I've presented, so I think they're very important. Oh, good, good. Yeah, some of these would, might be a little bit more um, in the weeds more, and some of them will be more about the, um, like the theory or the big picture. So I think it would be, I think it would be fun. All righty, I will stop sharing. Yeah. Go back and uh, Adrian, do you just wait to you direct the if you're interested, or how do we want us to let you know? Um, I ha so I I still have yet to sign up the whole library. Once I get that, I'm going to be emailing out the information about how to participate. I don't really know what that looks like yet. Okay. Um, so I need to email it to staff and to board members. But if you want to also tell me what you plan to attend, I mean, I'd love to know just to kind of know what people are doing. Is the chat working? Because I put it in the I chat. See Jane said yes, that you're interested. Yes, please. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'll just I'll send it to everybody so you all have it and can pursue it. You know, if you Thank you. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule. I'm done with that part about general updates. Do you want me to move on? Randy, to strategic focusing. Was that a yes? Sorry, I wasn't looking right at you. Okay. All right. So one moment. I'm going to close a few things here, share the other thing. Okay. So. As a reminder, we decided that every month when we have a meeting, we would just look at our strategic uh, areas and see how we're doing. I'm just verbally going to be sharing an update. And I wonder, actually, I'm not sure if everybody is muted, but I can't really tell if Fish and Stephen, if you're muted or not, but maybe that would help with I feedback. am muted, but you somehow are? I keep hearing the echo coming from you. Okay. Yeah, I can't tell where it's coming from either. Okay, thank you. But it sounds better, so, all right, I'll keep going. So the um, strategic focusing, this is what I wanted, it's just our visual. Um, distribution of physical materials are still going strong. I'm sorry, I'm getting all sorts of weird feedback. I wonder if it's on my end. I'm going to try unplugging and replugging in one second. All right, testing, can you hear me okay? Yeah, maybe it sounds a little better. Okay, okay, good, I'll keep going. Um, so no new updates on distribution other than it was going well before. It's still going really well, of course, except we had to close curbside. Um, we still had staff working remotely, but during the snow and ice, we did open on Monday. President's Day is not a city of Sherwood holiday, so we were there. I think we may have been one of two libraries open in the county that day. A number of them take that as a holiday, um, but we were there. It's, thank you to staff who showed up and made it happen. Um, and then Wi-Fi and technology the updates there. I talked a little bit about where we're at with being in high risk versus extreme risk in technology. The Chromebooks are moving along swiftly. Adam Lukowski is doing a great job on that, getting getting those set up for use. Um, the Wi-Fi broadband, I don't have updates on that. Um, and the computer appointments, again, we're hoping early March that we have those going. So. Um, 
it's pretty much as fast as we can humanly do it. I wish that, you know, we were all set to do it as soon as the high risk, but it was like, oh, we're in high risk. Oh, okay, here we go. And we still, you know, the Chromebooks had just arrived and um, we still have these desktop computers that need to be replaced and working with um, limited staff who can be on site and coordinating with other departments and so on. So, but that is coming. And then the services for seniors, as she, uh, council Browse mentioned this last night at City Council during the council comments. The, um, after the conversation we had here with our group about doing something joint with the Senior Advisory Board, and I spoke with Kristen Schweitzer, and we decided because that board is more in a, they're, they're still so new, they're more in a learning mode. And so we had a presentation by library staff at their board meeting. So Crystal and Adam put together a presentation. Thank you, Crystal. I heard so many great things about how that went. Um, hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, so, so that um, that presentation, I heard great things from Kristen. I heard great things, you know, Renee, that you were sharing about the presentation as you were hearing it on Senior Advisory Board. I don't know if we have next steps in place yet for how we'll continue to partner with them other than right now um, getting referrals for the computer use. So, I don't know, Crystal, do you wanna say anything? Have you heard anything more from Maya since you did that presentation? I've not heard anything more from Maya. I think that what we would like to do is still have um, a joint meeting with the two boards. Um, but like you said, there's still some still a learning curve um, for them to get up to speed. But I think that's the direction that we would like to go in. Good, good. That's good to hear. So I need to reach out to Maya and see then about scheduling that be good so um and then marketing we're working on um some of these things have happened already i don't know if the if the um ebook promotion has started that much but we're one of the thing or crystal did you want to chime in i saw your I just circle that, just popped up that did start today it did mm -hmm. oh it started today oh yeah, good we're, we'll wanna... be running for two weeks Yep. Do you want to add to that? Um, it's just what we had talked about. So it's going to be the promo bookmarks um, in the holds as they go out to patrons so that those patrons who um, might not be online much or might not follow us on social media, they'll, we're trying to broaden our reach and, and um, let them know about some of the services that we still have to offer. Good. Wonderful. And I know we're also working on um, putting together a direct mailer that could go out like a postcard that will go out that would be timed for summer these things are not oh, as quick as it would seem we, we have um um kind of real estate too with our front windows there are going to be some posters going up there that that have rotated already and more things coming um nothing huge there in terms of updates since our last meeting I think that, uh, Adrian, I think the teen group uh, did a bunch of displays for the windows. Yes. They're beautiful. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, good. I, I hear really good things that they enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Adrian, my daughter, who is 17, loves to just go and look in the window. That's her. You know. Oh, yeah her ability to peruse and yesterday she was looking through and she you know orders the different book bundles but yesterday she discovered the play away which i wasn't familiar with and she got three of them she's listened to one and a half of them already but that was so interesting and unique she loves that well that's great to hear that's yeah. great what yeah a neat thing I, yeah that's good i didn't i didn't really think about how um Playaways would be such a good thing there. Is that Crystal? Do you know if that's new? Did you put those out? Or maybe that was Amanda or Jamie. I did or not Adam. put those out. And no. if they're the if they're the youth ones, if they're the um, the YA ones, I'm guessing that's Amanda. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, the playaways are fun. So if anybody doesn't know what a playaway is, it's kind of a halfway point between like having an old um, 
like an MP3 player or or Walkman or something with but with your audiobook on it, um, and uh, and just using an app with an audiobook. But it's super. It's just plug and play, and all it has on it is that one book. And so you get it. It's in a plastic case, the size of a DVD case. We open it up. There's a little device in it. It's preloaded with that one book. It has what maybe three or four buttons on it. You know, play pause, rewind, fast forward, I think. You put in your own headphones there. You put in a, a, a two AA batter, two AAA batteries, I think it is. And um, and then you can just play it and it fits really nicely in a pocket or something. It's just a, I don't know, what is it? Like two inches by three inches or something. Very small. So people love it because you don't have to fuss with all this other stuff. You don't have, if you, if it's um, someone who maybe hasn't used ebooks yet or downloadable audiobooks yet, it's very approachable. But also, even if you do all those things, it's just one little thing you can put in your pocket. People say they like to use them while they're cleaning or running or that kind of thing. And, uh, and you don't have to fuss with all the other distractions on your device. Adrian, where do you find those on the website? Wow. Like if you want to put one on hold. You know, I back in the old days when we had our meetings in the conference room, I didn't do this sort of stuff. Well, like let's just look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still seeing my screen? It says to yeah. Okay, so I'm just typing playaways. Uh, many libraries have them. So that will capture it because it's in the title as, as a little add on description there. Okay. And then you could use so preloaded audiobook. I can make sure I'm only getting those and not something that happens to have the word play away randomly in the title. Um, you could, you know, limit to like whether you want teens, adults, children, topics, all these open up. Um, you could say available now at Sherwood. We have 201 playaways available right now. I could place a hold on those. These are sorted by relevance, but you could say date acquired, publication date, rating, all of that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Good. So that is what I had for an update on strategic focusing. Look, we're running, running quickly through all this. You're doing great today. So we can move right along if there's no questions for Adrian about strategic focusing to a review of outstanding pro projects. Okay, seeing if there are any questions, but I don't think so. Okay, so good. Thank you, Randy. So next is review of, um, I had, what do I have here? Five bullet points. Um, Share my screen again, just so you're looking at the same list I am. This is the agenda. Bring it back over here. Okay. So the library user survey, I had wanted to have a draft survey for you today, and I, I didn't get that accomplished with all of the ice events and closing things and getting ready for this high risk switch and all of that. So as I was thinking about um, all of the projects and uh, and also school will be starting at least for for my kiddo um, knock on wood March 8th things um, are scheduled for that so my time theoretically will open up a little bit and I need to do like housekeeping you know like make sure I'm working on the priorities in the order that I need to for library advisory board um, these aren't necessarily ranked in priority order but I wanted to just bring all of these forward, talk about them as a group, and make sure that we're all on the same page about the work as we can kind of ramp up and get caught up. Uh, the library user survey, I was actually thinking um, a really good time to do that would be during National Library Week, which is in April. Um, and it would just be, it could run for all of April, but it would be a nice thematic way to talk about, rather than me figuring out, oh, how are we going to promote the library during National Library Week and advertise a survey and keep those messages separate and not confuse matters, but kind of do a, a library um, advocacy message about understanding the role of libraries and please give us feedback, I think would dovetail nicely. So that's on the docket. And then we've got um, 
management reports and the annual report, typically every time we would meet, I would bring forward statistical reports. Usually I do a quarterly report. I haven't been able to do those during this last year. I've been sharing stats kind of as I get them for some different highlights and comparing things to the you know, same time last year, but I need to dig into all the stats and give you at least, um, give you those reports so that we're all looking at the same data. Um, what I was thinking of doing is the, I have the annual stats already. I don't have them in a pretty format, but we've, I had to submit those to the Oregon State Library already. So do a, an annual um, report. And I want to look at some specific stats, but I'm not, I'm not planning on going back and recreating those quarterly reports. Those are kind of, you know, they're not required by the governmental agencies that we work with. And, um, and they're going to be so off anyway because we just didn't have very many services going. And same with the one that I used to call the heat map, which was um, every month and every stat that we collected and kind of colored so that you could see red spots where things were really shifting and going down or green spots where things were increasing. I'm not planning on creating that either. Um, so I want to check with you. I see Jane's raising her hand. <laughs> I want to check. Yeah, Jane, what are your thoughts? You're muted. Yes, I liked uh, when you did some color coding. You, you muted again. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I liked it in the past when you color coded some of your reports because it made it easier to follow. And, you know, you have a, a nice level of detail. So don't give up color completely, please. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love color coding. Actually, I, I will do the heat map um, and the color coding. Like moving forward, I want to still have that as one of our regular reports, but I don't want to go back and create one for last year. Um, I was thinking in terms of what what might be worth time. Um, because it would be comparing like say no door count, it would be all red. I guess that's what I mean. The heat map would be almost entirely red and orange, but we already know that. So that's kind of like I'm thinking, is it really, do we really need that level of detail? I do need to fill in all those stats so that I can compare next year to this last year and so on. It's not that I don't want to collect those, but I just thought it probably doesn't need to be discussed so much as like, zoom out at the annual level but tell me if you're wrong if you need if you need to see a map of red <laughs> red, red and orange i guess what do you think jane well um it it tells us where we were you know i mean it it is reality that we closed for much longer than we thought so it's, it's just data. You know, some people like um, seeing data and they'll see this dramatic rise in circulation and, you know, different things when the doors open. But it doesn't mean people aren't using the library. I think the word got out that, um, you know, people are still doing things and still checking out and that Sherwood has a good population of readers. Oh. Thanks for sharing, Jane. You're talking me into it. Well, not to the point that it becomes a burden, but, you know, maybe there's somebody um, who likes to track the cost of books. I've been asked that question, too, because do books cost more than they used to? And, you know, I don't know, you know, so. That's data that the public could could need to understand. Mm hmm. Yeah, the cost of books, I, I do, I do include um, some information about the cost of books is kind of embedded in a formula because I want to see, well, what's the value of those circulations? Um, and I use a, I use a uh, um, library use calculator, which I could show you that too. Um, but it doesn't, that doesn't, um, it doesn't show you like the trends of, uh, going backwards of the cost of books. 
so that I'm, I don't know how to answer that question. But this, Jane, when you get your question, you just go and you, you could figure out, maybe this would answer it, the ALA library value calculator. And so if I put in one adult book, the nationwide average for that is $20 retail, one YA book, 17, one children's book, 12, one audio book, 15, which actually that's, that's low, that's more prorated, I think, because those are expensive. Anyway, it, it gives you a place to start. Um, let me go back here. Any other thoughts on data that you want to see as I start digging back into this? Okay, and then, so normally this body reviews our policies on a regular basis and and or we try to and we've been developing new policies we left off last spring we had worked on the behavior policy um that i still have some some work to do on fully implementing it and i actually wanted to look back at it make sure it still stands in terms of you know, COVID safety, not that it needs to say wear a mask when the governor requires it, but, you know, I just want to make sure that um, it, it covers what we need it to cover. And and uh, so I might bring that one forward again, um, but there'll be some other policies that will be slowly turning through. Um, um, I don't have the order of those yet, but just know that what that would look like for board prep time is I might say, here's the old policy, here's the marked up policy with some revisions, please read that before the next board meeting. So it might add a little bit of prep time. I try not to do more than one policy per meeting though. Sometimes if they're super short. Yeah, Jane. Yes, I like the idea of you giving us stuff to read ahead of time because I think it better prepares us for the discussion and then we're not shuffling papers around trying to find stuff because we had a chance to read it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. yes. So I support you if you do that. Good, good. Thank you. Okay, and then the facility master plan, we still have work with that. I think that will timing wise, that needs to bump down, even though we actually got the facility master plan by Hacker Architects. What I'm hoping to do is to request funds for next fiscal year, um, uh, one-time funds to have Hacker take another look at it and see now through the lens of global pandemics, would they do anything different to make the space a little bit more um, versatile, safer, just, you know, have more options if we are in this situation for a long time or come back to situations like this more frequently. And even just people having the memory of, oh, I don't know if I want to be cooped up in that space or, you know, how many people have touched that or is there, are there other design options that we should be looking at? It behooves us to do that before actually building anything new. So, so that process will be paused, but still kept on our, our docket. And then by assessments and evaluations, what I mean by that is typically we're doing regular uh, library um, assessments of our programs and our technology. And so some of those you've seen before, the EDGE assessment we usually do once a year. That's a national assessment tool um, where we we go through and we rate ourselves on all the various things that that technology touches with library services that are for the public. And that also includes um, access and it includes um, inclusion and it includes how we budget and includes what um, civic groups and organizations work um, collaborating with and how we're spreading the word out into the community about the technology access that we have and um, all these. It's a very robust assessment and every year they add new questions to it and it gets harder to increase the score. Um, but we're, we're in a cohort right now for small and rural libraries again. Um, or excuse me, no, that was a cohort we just came out of. Now we're in a statewide cohort by invitation for going through the this newest version of the edge assessment so um i would expect later in 2021 i'll have that report for you and we can compare it to the last year and then there's also a state library assessment where can 
Uh, we've done that once. That's a fairly new tool. Last time, those of you that were here may remember it was a very robust and wordy process. <laughs> and the reporting tool for that one was not as pretty as the edge assessment. It was just harder to kind of translate the information and figure out, well, what do we do with that? I think that process will get easier and the tools are getting better. So we'll have that again. And then there's evaluations for our services. So there'll be the, the user survey, of course, but we also have um, project outcome evaluations that we do, which evaluate our programs. And we kind of spot check different ones. So so um, like story times and the DIY craft shop and the various book discussions and a few others get spot checked um, ideally once a year. But I think we've, we've kind of gotten off schedule with those and then we can compare. And, and the beautiful thing about project outcome, so that's also national. So there's a national database of all these libraries submitting their data and you can compare to, well, how are our story times doing? Not just, you know, do people like them or not like them, but are they making an impact? Are they actually having the outcomes that we want and teaching parents and caregivers how to increase literacy skills for their little ones at home? make them feel more comfortable using library resources? Are they learning new skills? That kind of thing. So it, it asks some very specific questions and then we can measure that change over time. We can compare ourselves to um, libraries in our peer group. So libraries from across the country that are serving a population about the same size as ours and also libraries that have a similar budget as ours as well as just libraries in our own state. So there are a lot of really fun um, ways of looking at that and there are different questions for the different types of programs and I, I love those because there's so much they tell more of a story than just how many people participated in something or how many programs did we offer uh, so those will all be coming um, as we ramp up and, and can do more of our our work as a board um, so I'm still seeing the library user survey as a top priority and then the management reports and and uh, kind of the like the first three bullets and the last bullets really eventually will be all happening at the same time. But I do want to get that user survey to you next month and, and start at the beginning of April. Any questions or comments? I feel like I talked really fast during all that and I don't know if I use too much library jargon. Jane. <laughs> and you're muted. Unmute myself. I can yeah, always yeah, think of a yeah. question. Um, I would like to ask a question about when we open and uh, people come in. Are you going to, you know, like a store, a, a large store is counting the number of people in. Is that mm -hmm. something you're going to be asked to do? I have no idea. Um, yes. So we have various um, counting that we always do, but we need to do additional counting. So when we get to the point where we're letting people in, we need to make sure we don't go over a certain number of people, right? And so, and depending on how much square footage we're opening up, that number changes and we have to count staff too and, and any volunteers. Um, um, I need to double check this, but the number that comes to mind is still one person per every 36 square feet. I feel like that number actually changed and got bigger recently. Is it 54 now? Um, but that we would, we would, we have some metrics that we would only let in a certain number of people and actually probably much fewer than even the maximum that we could have because we need to, um, you know, allow for moving around the space too. And just the, the general um, not running out of our supplies for cleaning and everything as we ramp back up. So yes, we have, and the rules through OSHA, you have to have a, um, what do they call it? It's like a greeter, but for safety, they have a specific name for that person. Um, the person who, who you encounter when you first come in, who makes sure that visually the person has a mask on, that it's on properly and if not to offer the mask we have to have and that person counts can count as well so yeah there's a lot of stuff we haven't really figured out yet too about which door do people come in do they get to come in both doors or not thank you you're welcome yeah and then we still have our gate count so we always have that so the as people are coming and going in terms of just saying how many people visited today that that's been on this whole time, actually. 
Any other thoughts about statistics or or excuse me, not statistics, um projects, outstanding projects? Is it riveting? Are you excited about seeing all these things come through? No. All righty, uh, Randy, you're muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there are no more questions or comments, we can move right on to um, council updates with Councilor Browse. All right, so as Adrian shared uh, last night's council meeting, we, we did after some conversation, pass the resolution for the, um, to have Joe enter into some conversation regarding the uh, updated uh, contract. And yes, Crystal did do a wonderful job of representing the library at the Senior Advisory Committee. I think I shared last night that it's really awesome to, to be a part of two, to be the liaison between two boards that are working so well together. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what more comes out of that. This coming Saturday, we have our annual goal setting session. So it's going to be in person at the Center for the Arts, a nine to three-ish. Uh, that's where we'll be discussing goals for the year and uh, seeing where staff are at their current uh, process or their current goals. Uh, let's see. We have some upcoming joint work sessions with the Planning Commission uh, where, we, where we will be discussing some Brookman Road um, growth and then we'll also be looking at the comprehensive plan. We've got the Parks and Rec master plan that we'll, we will be adopting. Um, and then I think the next biggest thing, the one that I'm looking forward to the most is on the 16th, where we look at the different grant applications for the CEP grant process, which is some grant funds that are through the solid waste uh, disposal. So. That's always fun to see what different community groups and, and projects that the city staff have put together for us to review. So that's coming up on the 16th. Otherwise, it's business as normal. So unless you have any questions for me, that's my report. No. Questions for Councillor Browse? And Jane's got her hand raised. Oh, Jane, sorry. I can see you. And Jane, you're muted. Unmute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Renee, are you still having your public discussion on the 23rd about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion with the other two councillors, Sean and Kim? Yes. So, yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, Back in, I don't know if it was October or November, Sean and Councillor Young and I had a conversation, a community conversation, first just to, to find out what people were interested in. And then this, we, we, we meant to do it at least monthly or every other month, and we're a little bit behind. But we are meeting next Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Uh, if you're interested in, in a participating, send me a uh, message and I'll add you to the roster and send out a Zoom link before the, the conversation. Fantastic. Any other questions for Councilor Browse? For some reason, I can only see half my screen right now. So if you've got your hand raised, I probably can't see it. I'm not seeing anybody with their hand raised. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have any public con comment, correct? Correct, none. Do we have any other business for the board this evening? <laughs> then barring video. any other business, I think we, we got through that in record time, Adrian. Yeah, we did. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I thought that I was going to be so long winded and maybe I still was, but not about <laughs> the things I thought I would be. <laughs> it's great. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Then um, I think we can adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Hey, okay. Fritz, Fritz just raised her hand. Uh oh, Fritz did? Okay. Oh, I missed it. Fritz, you're muted. There. Okay. Um, on our last meeting, we talked a little bit about the senior our relationship with the senior centers. Um, has there been any feedback to anybody on delivery of books, of making sure that seniors are having good service in their various living situations? Do you mean with the assisted living facilities? Is that what you're yeah. speaking about? For yeah. Uh -huh. um, we haven't gotten to the point where we've we've done any more presentations with them. I okay. think so far it's just the senior center. Mm -hmm. Crystal, Crystal, can you chime in? Have you and Adam been doing anything more? Not since the um, the presentation with the senior center. Um, we're participating in the senior health fair at the Ackerley, um, kind of in a, in a passive way. They're not having people on site, but we did drop off materials for them there, um, but not beyond that. That's right. I forgot about that. That's great. So that used to be something where people would table and it'd be community services from the region, and then the residents could walk around and ask questions. So instead, there'll be a table with library swag and no library staff. Um, but I think they give you, did they ask also for information besides the stuff? Like, do, do they get to answer questions or is it just they, it's all self-service? My understanding is that for this event, it's all self-service. Okay. I saw Melanie, you had your hand up for a second. Oh, oh somebody yeah. Somebody is sharing their screen with their email on the screen. Oh, that's Randy. Randy, <laughs> you probably want to close your screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get everybody back, but I can't find you. So you're, you're sharing, uh, you're sharing your whole desktop with us. I <laughs> so, yeah, and I, can, I don't think I could do. Maybe I can just share over you and get help maybe you out you there. I don't computer. know if I have right anything. Now. Let's see. Um, one second. I don't know if that would work for me to do that. It's not really. Yeah, now it's happening. <laughs> this is go. interesting. I'm in unprecedented territory. I can still see yours, but I don't know if everybody else can. I can't see too. Randy's anymore. Oh, okay. No, I don't see Randy's anymore either. Did I boot you off, Randy, or did you find, figure it out? No, I can still see where you guys are. Do you see us? Okay, I'll stop sharing now. <laughs> this is the most interesting. I think we're, the next step is probably to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, my, my question was oh, quick. Yeah. Yeah, yes, no, no, you, your email said, your um, note says something about maybe going back to 6.30. Are we still going to have our meeting at 4 or are we moving the time? Did I say something? Uh, no, I didn't mean to send anything changing the time. I'm planning 4 to 5.30 for the foreseeable future. Okay. So we're, you know, well out of this pandemic period um, with the, you know, I mean, I want to reevaluate, but what I, what I thought I did on the calendar is send everybody invitations for all of 2021 with this time, 4 to 5.30. Okay. I, it just said, I, keep in mind that we may be moving back to 6.30. Oh, um, but that's why I just wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't have some magic date on when that would happen, but I know personally like i need to be to a point where we can have child like if you're talking about in person and 6 30 to 8 o'clock i i don't see that happening anytime soon okay. but jane would i see your hand you're muted okay Put my hand down. Um, I'm interested to hear if uh, you're still accepting applications for position nine. Yes, so we are always accepting applications even when all the positions are filled. Anybody anybody can always oh, do that. Oh, okay, um, okay. That said, I haven't been actively recruiting anyone right now just because we just went through this big recruitment and got, you know, got a pool and then we got through the holidays and it's time to 
put that word out there again? So we, we um, maybe this question isn't any of my business, but if somebody applied um, and we didn't accept them, does that, I mean, they aren't disqualified. They could be brought forward to position nine. So we have a full board. Or the people who applied, you put to one side and said, <clears throat> no, we're not going to go with that person. Are you talking about theoretically? Like theoretically, well, I don't know. We just have, whatever uh, you want to tell so, me. So, yeah. if we, so in theory, at any point, if we have a, a vacancy, let's say we have um, one vacancy and three people apply and only one person can fill that position. Um, the other two people, of course, are notified, you know, thank you very much. You know, we can keep your yeah. application on file. The city has a yeah. policy about that. I believe it's for a year that it stays an active application. Sometimes yeah. people will actually switch their application to a different board and be like, well, there's a vacancy over here and I want to apply for that one instead. Um, but then every time I have a new vacancy, I go back to whatever pool I have of active applicants. And sometimes I go back farther and just say, hey, do you want to reapply? Because you know we have we have a position now sometimes people withdraw this last time around we had um we had actually it was very competitive for the high school rep position for the the adults we ended up having people withdraw and so we actually had fewer applicants who actually went through the whole okay. process than we had positions um which is another reason why I was like, let's kind of wait <laughs> until you know people know more about what their lives are going to be like, and we have we have a good sized board right now. We got really small there for a little while. Um, so when I was recruiting for those, like when Danny and Fish and Fritz, when you all came on board, I had also reached out to people who had applied in the past and asked them, do you want to? Are you interested, and uh, or do you want to reapply? Um, does that answer your question, Jane? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah. But if you know anybody, absolutely. Send well, the the, okay. the police advisory board had eleven people apply, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand whether the whether our department has its own uh, pool, which is mm -hmm. what you explained. It's not one big citywide pool. It's a department pool. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, not so much department, but you know, for each people choose what board and commission or board or commission right. that they're right. interested in. Yeah. yeah. So I see crossover between cultural arts and library, and people are interested uh -huh. in both of those things. I've yet to see anybody cross from police to library or by. <laughs> but I, I know there's one actually she predates when i was here but she's not on the police side and uh yeah i think that's the only crossover i've seen for library yeah. Good. okay any additional business before i share my screen with you again <laughs> If not, then now at 5.07, we can adjourn. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for Bye. being here. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Mark. You can turn it off. If